What's up, Closer Nation? It's back with another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm Ryan Stuman, uh, founder of Break Free Academy and chief blogger over at HardcoreCloser.com, which is probably where you're watching this, or maybe you're watching it on YouTube. We're glad that you're here. Here's what I've got for you. I've got the main two reasons people fail in sales, right? We always hear people say, oh, I used to work in sales. It's a tough racket, man. There's two reasons those people fail and leave the business. There's probably one of these, maybe even both these reasons why if you're struggling and fail in sales right now, could be the reason why you're failing as well because it encompasses pretty much everybody and you're gonna love it. But before we get into that, I gotta talk to you a little bit about something as we get a little bit closer to the holidays. You're gonna start getting more Amazon packages on your front porch. Uh, you're gonna start getting more people in your neighborhood that are poor, that, that sadly, because if I was poor, and I've been poor before, so I'm not judging. But if I was poor and I had to get some shit for my family, I'm gonna go to the nice part of town and I'm gonna snatch some shit from people's front porches. Now, I've never had to do that, fortunately, because I've always been a hard worker, but I understand from people, because I grew up in the hood, so I understand people that have that mentality. And if worse came to worse, that's the hustle that I would be on too. And I don't say that to scare you, but I say this to tell you that there's an alternative. You can keep your things safe because you're also gonna have stuff under your tree. You're also gonna have like people in and out of your house. Your door's gonna be unlocked. You're gonna have relatives over. And thieves are smart. They wait for this time of year to screw people like you and I over. And so what you can do is you can protect your family, you can protect your home by going over to yourfreealarm.com, fill out the, uh, the form on there. One of our reps will call you, they'll talk to you about how the whole system works. You can get a free alarm for your house and you can add cameras to keep an eye on those front porch Amazon packages and to keep an eye on the inside of your home and then also just protect your family because you wanna make sure as people go in and out for the holidays, is, is, is you're getting a lot of packages in the house, delivery, just wanna do your best to stay safe. We live in an uncertain world, unfortunately, so you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure that you're covered. You can do that by going over to yourfreealarm.com. All right, so let's talk about sales failure. Why most people that are failing in sales fail. And it's really two, it boils down to two simple things. And the first thing, I'm just gonna come out and say it straight up, it's just talking too much, right? It's just somebody with a bunch of blah, blah, blah. That doesn't even have to be actual words because that's what it feels like to your prospects. You ever hear the term fall on deaf ears? Well, that's what a sales pitch does when a salesman over talks. There's really only two things required to be good at sales, and that's confidence and empathy. Right? You gain empathy by listening, not talking. Like People don't want to get with the salesperson that doesn't shut up. Because the, the salesperson that doesn't shut up is, it the, is the salesperson that's not listening to them. And if they're not listening to them, how can they understand possibly what it is that they need to be fixed by that salesperson? You ever been in a situation that seen the salesperson talk so much that they talk somebody into the sale and then somebody right back out of the sale again? Right? That is the number one reason people fail at selling. Like They make cold calls and then they just try to talk the person into buying. The, the way to do it is to ask the people. See, nobody likes to be sold, right? And if you're doing a bunch of talking and a bunch of selling and they make a decision when it's all over with, they're gonna have buyer's remorse and they're gonna feel sold. And while that may work, it's short-lived, it's not long-term, and it's not really a positive, good, karmatic thing for you or the prospect. Instead, people love to buy stuff. Right? So instead, if you'll ask them the right question and lead them down the path and show them that you care enough to figure out what their problem is and your product's the solution to it, it's a game changer because people love buying stuff, but they hate being sold. And so if you're talking too much, if you're failing in sales right now, here's like, this is the number one reason people fail from talking too much. Here's what you got to do. If you're struggling in sales right now, what you need to do is you need to transcribe your next sales call. Get on the phone, do your normal thing, and then have it transcribed. You can go over to rev.com, rev.com. There's no affiliation, no affiliate link. Just go over there. That's the company I use. Uh, use rev.com and have them transcribe your sales call. And then take a word count. You can go to wordcount.org. Uh, take a word count of how many words you said versus how many words the prospect said. Chances are, if you said the most words, you didn't close the sale. If the prospect said the most words in that scenario, they bought the product, right? Because they didn't close the sale, which the sale is always on the prospect side, resistance. So if you are struggling in sales right now, you're probably talking too damn much. You know, I get on sales calls pretty often still, even though I'm considered a CEO now and a sales trainer, I'm not uh, on the front lines as often, but I do several sales calls every week so that I can stay sharp. And people are always surprised. They say, Ryan, you know, I figured you'd be some fast talking. You know, you just have like all these word tracks and everything else. That's not what I do. I get on the phone, I'm like, hey man, what are you looking for help with? What really matters to you? 
I'm asking people questions so that they can give me confessions so that I can come up with solutions, right? And so if you're talking too much, that's one of the reasons you're failing. And number two is it's huge. You can't, you can't knock this one either. Number one is definitely talking too much. Number two is lack of follow-up. We know that right now, everything is jockeying for your attention everything you walk down the hallway you go and look on your phone you look at the tv you look you go dude i went i was at a bar a couple days ago and i'm still not drinking i've been over a month uh without a single drink so i'm pretty happy about that i'm not an alcoholic nothing like that just decided that life wasn't for me no more you know and i don't need you to praise me or anything like that i'm just giving you an example and i'm saying i'm just for those i'm still holding myself accountable <laughs> but so i go i was at the bar friends were drinking i'm the designated driver i go in the bathroom take a piss in the urinal and guess what there's advertisements right there in front of me on a TV trying to get my attention. And it worked because I couldn't do nothing but stare at the damn thing for the you know, minute and a half that I was in there. And so everything's jockeying for your attention totally. So the customer, the client, the prospect, they might want to buy from you. They might have every intention of buying from you and plan to do so immediately, but then something else got their attention. And then something else got their attention from that. Then something else grabbed their attention from that. The next thing you know, they're not thinking about you out of sight, out of mind. And if you don't follow up with them, that sale's lost when it could have been an easy lay down. Could have been an LDS, a lay down sale, and you let it walk right out the door, lack of follow up. Now we know that most salespeople won't follow up. We've discussed this in a previous video, but most salespeople won't follow up simply because they feel like they haven't earned it. Right? If they were too aggressive on that first call and they went all the way in and tried to close them with everything and it didn't work out, they're going to be too embarrassed to call back on the, and follow up with them and send out emails again. That's usually how it happens. Right? But you, what, what I do, what you should do, what I do, uh, uh, all right, let me just calm down. But what I do is I go into the sales calls expecting the, uh, the prospect to need me to follow up with them five or six more times. They say you got to follow up with somebody 18 times. I ain't got that much time. But I do have robots that follow up with people indefinitely, right? Email follow-up sequence, text follow-up sequence, video. Somebody could be watching this video 50 years in the future and I'm following up with somebody for Whiteboard Wednesday or as we say in the future, right? And so anyway, <laughs> you never know. You don't know what the hell we're going to say in the future. So uh, anyway, my, my hum weak attempt at humor today. So back to the thing, with the follow-up, I go into the first conversation expecting there to be a second, third, maybe even fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth conversation. So I don't go all the way in on the first one. I know that I gotta consistently nudge them, consistently push them a little bit closer, push them a little closer, give them another nudge, give them another nudge so they finally commit, right? Like we just can't rock up to somebody that's on the fence and be like, fuck you, right? Can't do that. That's not how it works, right? But what we can do is we can, come on, come on, Right? If you had a little kid, a little kid's trying to climb over the fence, he got stuck halfway on the fence. Right? You got a, you got a little kid, you're not gonna, just going to push him over. I mean, if it was my kids, I might. I'm just kidding. I would never do that. You're not going to push him over the fence. But what you are going to do is go, you got it, buddy. Okay, one foot in the chain link. Okay, another foot in the chain link. Okay, now swing your leg. You're going to just push them and nudge them over that fence. It's no different with your prospects, but it takes follow-up to be able to do that. And so here's the thing, if you're talking too much or you're not following up, those are the reasons why you're most likely not making the amount of sales that you should be. Now to some people, failing at sales is making only a quarter million dollars a year. Some people failing at sales is only making $40,000 a year. Some people failing at sales isn't even making $10 million worth of sales a year. So it's all in your own perspective. But I know this, if you're talking too much and you're not following up, you'll never close your true potential. You'll never get everything that you should. And you're really hurting a lot of your prospects by doing them the disservice of not closing them. So if you enjoy this, if you learned something from it, if you know somebody else needs to learn this lesson as well, share this on social media, forward it in an email, send it in a tweet, post it on the LinkedIn, and I'll catch you right back here at hardcorecloser.com and on YouTube for Whiteboard Wednesday next week.